Hello and welcome back to the LCS Dome, powered by Alienware, for Countdown, where we're delivering some mid-split awards and some sage advice until we hit the top of the hour and we jump into game one of the day. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Sunday fun day here on the LCS. Yesterday, we had one of the biggest games of the split, seeing Cloud9 take down rivals TSM. But the rest of the day was filled with a flurry of upsets, gentlemen. And it started with GG beating Evil Geniuses. What we thought was a second place team, they had Jazuke on LeBlanc, just got smoked out of the water with Closer playing Lee Sin. He had 12 kills, I believe, at the end of this game. He just had a monster performance. They had an answer to the LeBlanc with the Lissandra, and this is what the team wants to be in the beginning of the split, what they're always tweeting about, and we finally got to see it against a team that actually was a contender, but maybe now a little bit more of a pretender. Yeah, and for me, I you know, I was one of the people, you know, standing for uh, EG with the whole, oh, they're experimenting. No experiments this time. It was LeBlanc, like you said, and FBI popped off super hard as well on the Aphelios, and he has been crushing it quietly this split. I don't think we have talked about him enough. He has some of the best laning stats in the league. Yes, he and Huhi have made some mistakes in later portions of the game, but that's true with a lot of teams right now, so I think FBI has quietly been one of the best AD carries in the league. Golden Guardians themselves feel like one of the tougher teams to nail down, sitting at 4-5 and five is their record so far. Another team that was in the conversation for top two but fell down this week was FlyQuest. 0-2, Prawley. Yeah, we're talking about EG being pretenders a bit. Now maybe FlyQuest is our pretender. Like We had them rated so highly going into the summer split. They were our second-place team, but this split so far... They're starting to get out macro. They're starting to lose team fights. They're starting to lose early game. The things that they had as strengths are now not strengths, not necessarily weaknesses, but they're just not there anymore. So I don't know where FlyQuest has gone. I, I hope they you know, fly back to their nest and start giving us some wins. <laughs> well, well, FlyQuest goes and does gets that done for Prolly. Mark, we got to talk about the team that handed them one of their losses, and it came from Dignitas, who was 0-8 coming into the weekend and now leaves on a 2-0. Yeah, it was super impressive. This was a team that had interesting game plans and executed them in terms of their first victory with the Ignite Graves in the jungle, no flash. That was super impressive to see out of Dardoch. He continued that momentum on Lee Sin. Phoenix got a Zier twice. And uh, the bot lane of Dignitas continues to step up with Afro and Johnson. So this is starting to look like actually a pretty good team in those wins. It wasn't just punishing blatant mistakes by the enemy. They were forcing their will on the other team. I think beyond this, these two games as well, last week... Yeah, they had a really terrible game against 100 Thieves, but that close game against C9, closer than a lot of other teams, I think bides really well for this being one of the better turnaround moves at the middle of the split. Well, with an upset-filled day behind us, I want to gauge how much the landscape of the league has really changed with another edition of Overreactions. Uh, Mark, I'm coming to you first on this one. Dignitas will win a playoff round. Not only will they make it to playoffs, they will okay. win their first round. Yeah, that's an overreaction. I mean, I was just hyping them up, and I, I'm starting to believe in them more, but taking down another team in a best of five, I'm not I'm not quite there yet. If you want to say they're a playoff team, uh, you know, that they'll finish top eight, I, I totally think it's fair, but I'm a, I'm a, this is an overreaction for me. Okay. But you said it, you think it's fair. It says over right there. <laughs> I think it's fair. I think that Dignitas can definitely win a playoff round. Now, think, keep this in mind, right? They're they would because they may be cruising at the very bottom of the playoff bracket. They would only have to face off teams that are in third through eighth place. So yeah, they could totally beat that. They're not going to face and beat the second pl best place team when we get to that. But third place, I could totally see that happening. Who is in third right now? Not FlyQuest. TSM. I don't think they could beat TSM. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's a good question, right? TSM is the third-place team at the moment, probably. I mean, I see you think it's an overreaction, but specifically, you know, hypothesizing that matchup, how close do you think it would be, if at all? Yeah, I, I don't think, because they have to win a playoff round, right? So we're not saying, like, they can't win a playoff game, which I think is right. possible, but for them to take a three out of five against someone, I don't really see many teams uh, that they can just do that to you know, three times consistently, remember? Because their champion pools... Not that extensive. We see the Azir on Phoenix. Don't think he's going to get it forever. Thresh on Aphromoo, not going to get it forever. So best of five, I think, is a little, little overreaction. Fair enough. Next up, coming right back to you probably on this one, FlyQuest roster. This FlyQuest roster has peaked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to say this is fair. There, This is not the Wild Turtle roster that got second place. So we're not saying anything like crazy peaking where they're finishing second, but their first couple weeks – 
they look pretty decent. But ever since then, they've been like slowly. I don't know if it's them getting worse or the team getting or the sorry the other teams getting better. So so far, they're just kind of on a downward trajectory. I, w I would like to see them kind of pick it up a bit, but so far, I, I just I don't like know where their highs are. I just like how me me and probably are on the same page and crumbs is always out there in left field what do you mean this is an overreaction crumbs they they've been on a downward trajectory okay, this yeah. is just what happened last year where they finished top four and then and then tanked it in summer it's the same thing it's history repeating itself peak means this is the best we've gotten to see out of them that they're not going to be able to achieve better than this that sounds crazy to me they rallied at the end of last split so they were able to perform better this is saying they're going to just get worse and worse and worse or at least never go back Flat to line. a level that gets them wins versus bottom teams i don't see it actually to, to crumbs's point peak implies that it comes down that would be a plateau if it stayed flat. So if you get, you know, like let's right. be if we're being real with our topography here. We, we, we also uh, might I, I think I'm gonna have to give this one to Crumbs. We also didn't say performance. It could have been ranking that they've peaked oh, at second yeah. place in spring. Uh, okay, which is all right. More semantics. How I was semantics. All right. I give it to you, Mark. I give it to you. All right. CLG will still finish last in summer, even after this incredible start that CLG has had. They will finish last. Crumbs, what are you thinking? Uh, I actually think this could be fair. Now, <laughs> the reason why I think it's fair is that they are, they only have four wins right now, and the other teams that are at the bottom are behind them are really creeping up on them. So <laughs> they need to Again? make sure that they're getting up there because they're already <laughs> messing with the top lane, Substitute and Deus and Ruin, so we don't know what's going on down there. So I'm not saying that this is a bad team. I'm saying that the bottom teams behind them are really getting it together and ramping up, whereas what we've seen out of them is kind of more of the same that we saw in the beginning of the split. All right, from you two? I I think we're overreacting about the bottom teams being so great. Like I think they have shown good performances right now, but they still have a lot of games. That, well, they have two more games that they have to win to even catch up to CLG, and then CLG has to keep playing bad. I think too many things have to happen for CLG to be last. I think CLG had a really easy strength of schedule at the start of the year. It's since equalized, but I don't want to go too far in the other direction, whereas like before it was like, are they top two? No, but they're not bottom two just because they played a bunch of playoff teams. All right, all right. I like that. But, hey, I, I like your reasoning, Crumbs, for if they were to finish last, it's because of the bottom-tier teams making changes to move themselves yeah. up the standings. Our fourth and final overreaction of the day is Golden Guardians are fine. <laughs> I can see that. Nah. Overreaction. Are you guys kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> They're fine? All right, Mark. Lay it on me. They're great. <laughs> They're great. <laughs> Did you think I was going to go down the other way? I actually thought that? you yeah, were. I thought it was a negative. Classic I'm Mark Bait. Okay, I'm a positive person. I don't know what you're talking about. So what what for you is the biggest selling point of this Golden Guardians roster? I think they're one of the teams that in that kind of middle grouping of teams, they're the one with the strongest sense of an identity. I know what they generally are trying to do and what they want to do. They have strong laners in bot lane. Closer's a great jungler, and Demonte is on a supportive mid lane, and Hanser's kind of doing his own thing, holding it on his own in, in top lane. And so I see what they're trying to do. I think they can get better at it, and they're not perfect, but I, I think they're a little bit better than fine. All right, half the split behind us, half the split to go. We're going to take a look at the standings, see how C9 comes into the second round. Robin, undefeated, atop the table, continues that two-game separation above the rest. Team Liquid sits alone in second with TSM right behind them in third. And then we have a slew of teams competing below them, duking it out today. Now, remember that the Bud Light League Lounge will be wrapping up the entire weekend with it on twitch.tv slash Bud Light, where Jack will be joining us for a C9 versus TSM wrap-up to the weekend. As we go to break, though, our resident world champion has some more sage advice to level up your life. And now, it's time for sage advice from a literal world champion. Hey, all you junglers out there. Remember, when your mid laner is ahead, they don't need the blue buff. When your mid laner is behind, they don't deserve that blue buff. This has been Sage Advice from a literal world champion. And now, it's time for Sage Advice from a literal world champion. Are you struggling with those roster decisions? Well, let me give you a piece of advice. If you've got a jungler in Academy who's got six LCS championships and two MSI finals, Try playing them on your LCS roster. Just might get you a couple wins. This has been Sage Advice from a literal world champion. 
I feel that much closer to being a world champion already. Welcome back to the LCS Countdown. We're at the halfway point of the split. We wanted to take a look at some of those end of split awards. Let's get the easy stuff out of the way. I feel like everyone's going to be aligned on all of these. First and foremost, Honda MVP front runner. I think it goes to the entirety of Cloud9. Am I right? <laughs> Blind they would want that. Or am I That's right? Crazy. Exactly. Uh, if we had to call one person out, I do think most people would spotlight Blabber uh, above one tiny step above the rest. But it really does feel like anyone on this team could be in contention. I think it's the nature of the role, man. You're playing jungle right now, and it's so easy to shine. And he shines much brighter than everybody else in the role, whereas all the other members have had some blunders. Well, not to say that Blabber hasn't had some. <laughs> I was going to say, he's himself, had one too. <laughs> but his high highs are really uh, almost at the level where closers Lee Sin yesterday, but much more consistent. All right, let's move right along then, since we're all agreed there. Coach, front runner, coach of the split award. This one, the front runner, is Reaper. Again, they're undefeated. Hard to argue with that. Yeah, he's he's been doing incredible work with the Cloud9 organization for years. He always it feels like he has new pieces, and he's always pushing into finals. And this is the best recipe he's ever had. Uh, and it's no surprise that they're pushing for undefeated. All right, and then finally, Rookie of the Year front runner. Remember, this is now of the year, and we are taking a look at TL's tactical. Yeah, I mean they're staying at second place. This isn't a he had one good weekend situation. This is he's been performing well for the last five weeks. So really excited to see this guy play. And honestly, his stats kind of hold up to a veteran AD carry, a top AD carry in, in ALCS. Yep, it's sitting in third place right now, hoping to do better as the split rolls along. Now those are the official awards, and we'll see if all the votes play out that way in week nine, and the players themselves can still affect those votes with their own performances. But it's time to look at the unofficial midseason awards, starting Best with the time. award most exciting to watch. Crumbs, take it away. Your most exciting to watch nominees are Licorice, Jizuke, and Blabber. Now, this category is about playmaking. It is about standing above the rest in your specific role. And more importantly, it's about always being exciting. You're not the slow team that's going to be trying to play the macro game. You're looking for individual mechanical outplays all the time. All right. And the winner is, for most exciting player to watch, Blabber. Yay! What? I voted for what? him. Blabber, yes, I wanted Blabber because no other jungler has as many consistent games that are really on the edge of like, whoa, that was something that a lot of players would not have gone for, whether it's the lethality Lee Sin popping off, whether it's the Olaf power clearing like no other. There is a lot to get excited about this player. His statistics back it up, so anybody that even wants to be a great jungler should just be watching him. Mark, you're unconvinced? I mean, he's already gained the MVP. You got to spread the love around a little bit. I'm giving it to Licorice. You talk about dominating his like his his field. Do you see the stats yesterday? 22 CSD at 15. Next closest was Kumo at three. He he's he's so dominant that like over half the league has negative CSD in top lane because he's so good. On top of the fact he's got cool picks. He brought Wukong out first. How can you not love this man? He's playing Orin. It's not playing I, top I forgot. <laughs> Stats, stats are exciting to Mark. So he sees the stats and he's like, whoa, most exciting stats. <laughs> I can't great. wait to look at the spreadsheet. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Brawly? I mean, you also excite... didn't seem convinced. No, I mean, Blabber has a like, most impressive to watch. I really enjoy mm. it. But in terms of just excitement, I mean, <laughs> Jizuke's got to be mine. It's a roller coaster. Is he going to fee? Is he going to carry? I don't know. You don't know. The draft obviously doesn't know what he's going to pick. It's, there's too many variables. It's just lovely to watch. I do All not right. get excited watching a Kog'Ma passive miss. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. R goes <laughs> here. R goes here. How about a Kog'Ma here? that just presses S when he does? Uh, I'm with you. I'm with you, Crumbs. I love watching Blabber. He is one of the most exciting players in the league. Next up will be the category of most improved. Probably. So the nominees for most improved are Kumo, Aphromu, and Core JJ. And this category required you to play in spring, and we're seeing your improvement now in summer. Okay, so across from spring to summer, improvement in performance. The winner of most improved goes to Evil Genius's Kumo. Yes, I voted for Kumo as well. In spring, I gave him so much crap because he was just getting dominated in the lane. He wasn't playing team fights well. His TPs were sloppy. But in summer, that's completely turned around. He actually has good laning stats just for Mark. And then he's also teleporting before the enemy top laner. Like, he's a pretty formidable player right now, especially the fact that he was able to abuse Volibear before anyone else was picking him up. Yeah, I would go to Mark on this, but I know that, you know, a 3.0 CSD at 15 is enough for him to say, I'm all behind Kumo on this one. I, crumbs. What's your take on the most? 
most improved <laughs> players in the league. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, he played Wukong. He played. Yeah, Wukong. oh yeah, oh, and he <laughs> played Wukong. How <laughs> can I forget? That, that's what Mark is in. All right, he was the no. second top player to play Wukong. Uh, I was All right. Say, I oh, say I voted for Kuma, but Afro deserves a lot of credit, especially All for right. being such a veteran player. To have a, you know an improvement is arguably more difficult. I don't know. It's been impressive. Yeah, no, he we were left wanting a little bit from Aframu in spring, and he's definitely stepped up in a big way and has been a catalyst for those couple of wins that Dignitas has picked up. All right, Mark, you've got the next category, and it is the best pickup category. Please explain. Yeah, this is a player who joined a new roster in summer. And so this is the org's perspective of picking this player up. Uh, Dardock joining Dignitas. Ever since he subbed in, they've looked like a totally new team. Uh, Huni for inspiring the improvement for our most improved winner in Kumo, uh, you know, putting a little pressure behind him. That was a great pickup. And then, uh, of course, double lift. Uh, it kind of goes without saying, helping catapult that team back into the top three. All right. Well, there you have the nominees for best pickup. And the winner is TSM's double lift. Got to be expected. Uh, you know, he's been very impressive over the course of the split and has been a huge part in turning around TSM after a relatively disappointing uh, spring split. It's, it's kind of hard to argue sometimes with uh, just one of the literal best 80 carries out there on the market. So if you pick him up, he's going to be a boon for your squad. I want to roll a straight forward here to come back player. Probably you've got this category. Yeah, so again, this one means the player did not play in spring and has come back. And Summer, get it? Come back, player. Uh, and we have Spica, Lorlo, and Contracts. Spica, Lorlo, Contracts. And the winner of Comeback Player of the Split is... TSM's Spica. Yeah, Spica played in the gauntlet back in 2019, but in spring of 2020, he wasn't picked up uh, to play on the LCS roster. But since his debut again in Summer... His Kane game was the only game you can kind of, you know, wag a finger at, but his other eight matches have been superb. He's been a really strong jungler. He's been doing well keeping up early pressure, and he's also been playing team fights very well. I mean, the 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 thing he set in that gauntlet was three Sejuani games, right? That, I think that's what <laughs> yeah, he it played. Went I think it's <laughs> yeah. pretty easy to come back and be like, oh, look at me. Look at uh, everything I'm capable of doing. I don't, we didn't get to see much of it, so I think that contrast is right. what makes Spika So the comeback, the comeback so meta, have a bat, bad enough be split so bad. at oh. some point in your career that <laughs> there can be no <laughs> argument when you return. Mark, what are your thoughts on this category? I was going to give a little bit of a head tap to a contracts. He hasn't had as much time as some of the other players to, you know, to himself in this category I think but uh, it was cool to hear some of the interviews and perspective that he had about when he went down to academy he initially thought that he was too good for it and now uh, you know having to revamp that to actually earn his way back into the LCS and he had a pop-off performance specifically on that Nidalee right I mean what a what a great way to show back up best Nidalee we've seen all split in North America for sure there you have it one more category left to be decided here in our mid split awards this one is yours crumbs it's for worst performance in a winning game this is fairly <laughs> self explanatory it's dubbed the tactical int award and the, the nominees are broxa in his game against golden guardians you've got ryoma in their game against flyquest and jazuke on his game against uh, immortals now crumbs now, oh a lot of it comes down to just how hard did your team carry you? Right. So, and what kind of sense of false security did you lull the enemy into? Well, C uh, Crumb's a master of the tactical int in his own right. <laughs> Felt only natural that he would be the purveyor of this category. But I will do the honors of revealing the winner for worst performance in a winning game. And that goes to Team Liquid's Broxa. <laughs> So he, yeah, this started off fantastically with a level three gank that quickly got abused by Closer as he was able to then go counter jungle the red buff. And this is started the snowball that let Golden Guardians get an ocean soul. But that is why it was such a tactical and Golden Guardians felt like they had the confidence of the early game comp and then were not able to close out the game at the end of the day. And he actually even ended up the game with still a negative gold deficit despite winning. That is just masterful int. And he, I think he also got Flame Horizon that game. So it was one of those ones where there's, there's a lot of... Uh, the fact that he didn't recover back to positive was very impressive. Or not, imp I don't know what you're calling <laughs> Right, yeah, I mean, exactly. <laughs> like, how do you, was it impressive or was it not? You know, I guess uh, the, the performance out of the other four was impressive. And you're right, he goes home with some hardware. Well, not really. There's no trophy for this. But 
there's a clip of it on the internet. <laughs> Today's <laughs> matches will see many of the nominees face off. Things get started with TSM and Immortals going head to head, and then we've got 100 Thieves starting their second round robin up against Cloud9. That's a doozy of a way to kick off the second half. And two more matches before we call it a weekend. I want to turn our attention to that first game of the day. We've got TSM versus Immortals, where TSM are coming off a loss to Cloud9, but it was one of the most competitive games that we've seen against the champs so far this split. We started talking about how Bjergsen versus Niski was going to be huge, and Bjergsen really showed up in the laning phase, was able to start getting ahead, and then even got that solo kill. But C9 continued to innovate, well, innovate in NA here, and bring us the Senna Wukong that was actually really impressive to see out of Sven. So despite TSM playing a super close game, when it came down to teamfight, c 9 superior teamfight, and made it seem like the early game was just nothing but a dream. Yeah, I was I was really impressed. Uh, you're saying like there's everything in this game that you could have wanted. They had cool drafts. They had exciting games to play through the first 20 minutes, and then C9 flipped to switch, and they ended the game pretty quickly. Which means there's no stalling out, no lag in the game. It was it was really impressive. Well, that brings us back to that C9 measuring stick that we've been talking about, Mark. Let's pull up the gold graphs and take a look at how TSM did in comparison to the rest of the squads. I'll direct your guys' attention to the bottom of the graph, actually. Again, what we're measuring here is how long you could hold a gold advantage against Cloud9 before you start seeing those lines tick up and to the right. TSM only outmatched by Team Liquid in terms of how far into the game they could extend that gold lead. Yeah, and C9 only had a 23% major lead that game, while TSM having a 2%. The game was 74% close, and yeah, what that means is just the stat line is very close. You don't see that gigantic trajectory you see in most of the colorful lines. The gray and the white lines are what we want to look at. Those are indications of strong performances against Cloud9. Hopefully, we'll eventually see one of these lines skew downwards, but currently, our expectation is how long can you keep it steady, and if you can even get it below the you know, x-axis, that's just a bonus. And I would say the other thing, too, that was more impressive, not just if you actually look into the gameplay, T, uh, C9 has made these mistakes in the early game, which throw a little bit of a goalie in the enemy's favor. They've had that mistake against FlyQuest. They had a similar one against TL. I didn't feel like C9 made a big blunder against TSM and that the gold lead TSM got was off the back of them actually playing really well. I thought C9 was also playing well that game. The fact that uh, TSM was kind of going blow for blow, where Niski would make a play on the top side, Bjergsen would go bot, then he started getting solo kills. Like, those were well earned gold leads, uh, which I thought even made it somewhat more impressive a little bit, even if they did lose control of the gold lead faster than TL. I would, I would totally agree with you there, Mark. Even though statistically, graphically, it looks like TL did do better against Cloud9, anecdotally in watching the game, it actually felt like there was a little bit more fight out of TSM there, and that in those early game moments, they were generating more of those gold advantages for themselves. Now, this is, of course, only one of the teams taking to the stage today in the first game of the day. On the flip side, you've got Immortals. They did find a win a couple of weeks ago first of the split after the roster changes but crumbs they got kind of trounced on friday dignitas really proved to have the better preparation and even though we like what we saw out of immortals none of that showed up in that match i really felt like this team maybe got a little bit overconfident at source because of how close those games must have been so the fact that they did not give enough respect to dignitas the same way that they treated the other their other opponents i think started to show because they were really lax at daisical in and thinking about what the opponents could do and on the flip side dignitas was just so quick to punish i was really impressed by that so i'm putting all my eggs away from the immortals basket and just chucking them over to the Dignitas one because I really think I this team chuck if eggs. they continue right. okay so all right. you know what <laughs> you gotta get away from these <laughs> egg you know, I'm not chucking here on eggs. the desk placing uh, them gently fill our baskets with something other than eggs my friends probably this this does key into that conversation that you brought up though earlier which is you know how much maybe were we over indexing into some of the closeness of of Immortals losses after they put up that win right we were so willing to say uh, this could have easily been three in a row. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think uh, hindsight's twenty twenty. Uh, <laughs> they did go o two last week, but we spoke about them like, nah, that, those weren't real losses. So, <laughs> on yeah, this Friday they actually yeah didn't show up. We didn't get those like clutch plays they got, which you know kind of makes sense because they haven't proven to us they can actually finish and close a game without mistakes. So I do think we 
maybe overreacting. Jump the gun. Yeah, a maybe bit. a little bit. But hey, if they can finish and close out against the TSM here today, that would do wonders in terms of changing our opinions. I do want to get some quick win conditions, not win conditions, predictions rather. I'm so ingrained to go to those right before we go to gameplay. Let's take a look at how you guys think the games will go before we dive into that first game. Everyone's going for TSM, Cloud9, oh. and Team Liquid. Mark. Makes sense to me, given they're the top three teams in the league, so it's that fourth game of the day that has a difference. And Mark, you're going for CLG. What's the thinking? I actually don't know. My brain was off. Did I say CLG? <laughs> Mark. Now this is yeah, what, yeah, another flip flop. Mark, uh, yeah, even I, if, I just even if my you email. didn't, I expect <laughs> you to stand behind the graphic. No, you did, I, actually. I, 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 always, just gotta, I, I gotta confirm that this is I what I checked my chose. email, too. I checked yeah. my email. I did Defend say CLG. it now. Uh, it was like 9 o'clock in the morning when I sent that. <laughs> no, not, no, not that part of <laughs> okay, it. Okay, okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I think that CLG still has a lot of strengths that they, they can play around. Six actually had a very strong performance. I think it was last week, and Pobelter has been able to find interesting things. Rune was, despite being strong early in the split, kind of running it down. He had so many isolated deaths. He was leading the league in them, as well as just having, an, a, I think, leading the league in deaths overall. So I was... Uh, looking with the deuce swap in to help change some of that around. All right, well, there you have it. That comes in the fourth game of the day. Before that, though, we got to get through three others. So let's hand it over to Pastry and Azale to get us into that clash between TSM and Immortals.